I want to call this meeting of the Belton Independent School District Board of Trustees to order a quorum of board members is present. This meeting has been duly called and posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. If you'll join me in the Pledge of the American Flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States of America, America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the Texas flag. Honor the, the Texas flag. flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. If you'll be seated just for a moment, I I made a deal. Christine Luciana is here, and she's going to give us a two-minute update on a really cool program. You have a flyer at your place. Please. Good evening, board members and attendees. Thank you for the opportunity. many schools, Belt and Tigers are doing great stuff in their community and they're actively involved. We just want to highlight some of those efforts. So my contact information is included in here. This brochure just gives a brief um, highlight for each of the seven different programs. On the back of the brochure for the Fort Hood contact is for Jane and Sam and myself. And I'm also talking to talk about some of these programs, so I'm going to be in touch with her so that we can get some of your schools involved and hopefully some artwork um, we can by the end of the week so we can showcase some of that artwork and some of your content. So with some of these competitions, there's an opportunity to win up to $200 for those school organizations. Some schools might be limited in resources, so we encourage you to use the Adopt-a-School program. I know your Adopt-a-School units are actively involved in Belton, so definitely leverage resources to help you out. Are there any questions? Thank you. We appreciate you bringing this opportunity for our students and glad to participate. Thanks for coming tonight. All right, be careful driving down the road. At this time, the board will uh, go into closed session to discuss personnel consultation with attorney and real property. Um, I expect it'll be a, approximately an hour, and we will return at 6 o'clock and pick up uh, recognitions. At least that's our tentative schedule. Okay, if I can have your attention, thank you for waiting for us. Um, we are glad you're here. We're going to begin, we're going to reconvene in, in open session. It is 6.04, and we're going to begin this segment with some recognitions. We've got some special uh, folks that we want to recognize, so Elizabeth, get us going with our 2017 TISCA Lifetime Achievement Award for Excellent. Coach Henry. I'm, I'm going to go off script first and Come foremost, Mr. Here, Pittenger. So we can talk about you. Come on up, Coach. The Texas Interscholastic Swimming Coaches Association selected Coach Patrick Henry to receive the 2017 Lifetime Achievement Award, the highest honor the association awards to coaches. In his fourth year as Belton Swim Coordinator and Coach, Henry has been coaching for a total of 35 years. During his coaching career, Henry has been recognized 20 times as the District Coach of the Year, eight times as the Regional Coach of the Year, and twice as a State Coach of the Year. Congratulations, Coach Henry. You know, we uh, obviously are very proud. We're usually here congratulating his athletes for some great things or his son for some incredible achievements. But what an accomplishment. We're really proud of you. And, and to get a lifetime achievement with by as a young man is really something. I hope that they're not wishing that you're done. But but we know you're not as old as they seem to think you are. They did give me a cool ring. Yeah, they do. That's very cool. Yeah, there you go. Very nice. So wonderful. Yeah, it's swimming. <laughs> it's a swimming thing. It's a water. There you, there you go. Yeah. That's great. Very nice. Very nice. Congratulations. Yeah. Quite an accomplishment and, and really, really says a lot. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, next up, the Belton Rotary Club Educator of the Quarter. Yes. Um, we'd like to uh, 
to bring forth uh, Paige Carskio. Paige is being recognized by the Belton Rotary Club for her service to Belton. She's a third grade teacher at Miller Come Heights. Come on up. And she has eight years in education in her second with Belton ISD. Ms. Carskio is passionate about the art of literacy and loves the practice of reading. Her excitement is contagious, and she encourages her students to dig deeper into text and seek deeper understandings. Jennifer Connor, the principal at Miller Heights, stated, Paige was nominated because of her desire for continuous professional and personal growth, as well as her ability to inspire her students and peers. She consistently creates engaging and high-level instruction and is a valuable asset to the Miller Heights Learning family. Awesome. There you go. That looks like a proud dad back there, huh? How about that? I recognize that look. That's awesome. Congratulations. Uh, and thank you to the Belton Rotary Club for, for providing this. What a great recognition. Understand? Have you been to lunch yet? She hasn't been to lunch yet. You're going to get to go to lunch with some of our uh, illustrious uh, <laughs> compadres. Uh, Mr. Camden will be there. Yes. Who else is uh, Belton Dr. Rotary? Dr. Muller will, will accompany you. Uh, great opportunity for them to honor you. Thank you to them. Well, how about the uh, Temple Rotary Club Educator of the Month? Yeah, and so we have Kim Duckworth. She's being recognized by Temple Rotary, and uh, Kim is in her 27th year in education and her second year with Belton ISD. And Ms. Duckworth teaches our learners who have specialized academic needs. She's a functional academics teacher at Sparta, and she sets very high expectations for her students' academic and behavioral development, and they rise to this expectation. Strong relationships and consistent communication are the foundation to her success. Julie Manley at principal at Sparta stated, families trust Ms. Duckworth with their children as a result of her open communication and specialized skill set and understanding their students' needs. She creates a learning environment which is inviting and organized, and she manages the varying students' levels in her class with ease and grace. Congratulations. And again, there's some proud family up there taking pictures. Y'all trying to be subtle, I saw, but, you know, come on. Congratulations, that's a big deal. My understanding is you've already gotten to go to lunch with Miss Lee, is that right? Yeah. Accompanying her to, to lunch with the Temple Rotary Club. We sure appreciate them and, and their willingness to do that. Okay, well, we uh, each month uh, recognize one of our Big Red community partners, people, groups and organizations and businesses who go above and beyond to connect and partner with us in educating our students. So, yeah. The Military Order of the Purple Heart is an important partner to many military families and veterans. Within the Belton ISD community, this organization and its local members have gone above and beyond to support our students and campuses in their efforts to serve others. In December 2015, Belton New Tech High School at Waskow was named the first Purple Heart High School in the United States to honor the school's dedication to community service. Plans are underway right now with New Tech and the Military Order of the Purple Heart for December 13th um, annual Servant Leadership Day. Today, on behalf of Military Order of the Purple Heart, we have their state commander, Mr. Earl Williams, their chief of staff for Region 5, Mr. John Footman, and the ladies auxiliary state commander, Mrs. Doris Williams. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all. We are so proud of the partnership we've had in the way we've been able to educate our young people, uh, our students throughout uh, their school career on the importance of our connection in, in, with military and our patriotism. We just came off of last week's great event. So thank you for, for helping us educate our students. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking of which, Mr. Pittenger, I'd like to go off script for just a second. Um, knowing that uh, Saturday was Veterans Day and we had a lot of great celebrations at our different campuses in honor of that day, I would like to ask anyone who served in any branch of the military to stand up and be recognized. Oh, awesome. Thank you for your service. So thank you all for your service. I, I also want to mention many of our students in our schools were involved in some wonderful Veterans Day activities. Uh, South Belt Middle School has an especially uh, moving uh, Take a Vet to School Day. I hope you saw the flag, the flags that our woodworking uh, students, CTE students at the high school made uh, that were presented to um, the faculty, veteran, faculty at South Belton who are veterans. Beautiful mm -hmm. flag plaques. And, uh, Really a, a wonderful ceremony, but several other. We had students going to the Belton Senior Center and, and other events, and, and I think it's, uh, even though Friday was a student holiday so that students could be involved with family, uh, we were able to do those 
uh, days before and appreciate all the effort yeah. to do that. Also wanted to uh, give a special uh, commendation to our Marine Corps Junior ROTC. They held their birthday ball, which they do each year. And uh, Dr. Dubois was honored as the guest of honor, had an inspiring speech of quotes and importance and, and inspiring those students. That is a great event for those students. I encourage you to try and go to those in future years. Uh, they get all dressed up and it is quite the event, uh, really special. And then our uh, Belton FFA and local HEB partner up for the Thanksgiving food rally. We had a record um, 71, is that right? Elizabeth, help me. What was the number? I forgot the number. That's not right, it's more than that. A lot, anybody remember? Look at my tweet. Um, anyway, there were a lot, huge crowd, um, early in the morning, um, raising money, getting food for our neighbors. Really a special 76, event. Okay. 70, it was a large, 78 maybe the number. I don't know. Anyway, it was a lot. Great event. Numbers not what's important. Uh, loving our neighbors is what's important. So great opportunity. Okay. That's uh, all of our recognitions, I believe. I lost Elizabeth, but I think we're good. Uh, thank you very much for that. Our next item on our agenda is public comments. We had one earlier that, that we had go. I hadn't seen anybody else signing up. Seeing no other takers, we'll move on to our consent agenda. Does any board member, do any board members have an item you'd like pulled from the consent agenda for discussion? Hearing no takers, let me identify those items. We have the minutes of the October 16th, 2017 regular meeting. We had the unaudited financial report for the month ending October 31st, 2017. We have gifts, grants, and bequests. There's a list on page 39. There you go. Thank you very much to those folks uh, uh, for their partnership and, and uh, assistance uh, with our specific programs. We have two expenditures over $50,000, both of which are budgeted items. First one is the Tarver Elementary Energy Management Controls. This is for $89,740 to Automated Logic uh, by board vendor. And then we have the Cisco SmartNet Core Support Renewal, $93,126.13. Presidio is selected as a vendor to support this renewal through the DIR Cooperative. We have two supply equipment and service bids. The first one is custodial supplies, bid number 17109091169. To approve the vendor list, the contract will expire November 30th, 2018. And we have the fine arts equipment supplies and materials, supplemental two, RFP 17098151166. Again, to approve the vendor list, this is a seven month contract effective from December 1st, 2017 through June 30th, 2018. We have, um, um, to approve an interlocal contracts or purchasing cooperative is the delivery method for the Lakewood Elementary HVAC replacement project and authorize the superintendent to negotiate contracts with the contractors who can provide the best value to the district and approve the expenditure as presented. Uh, again, a budgeted item. We have the early release waiver for the 2017-18 school year. Again, as we have uh, previously approved our school calendar. And then the dedication of the final plat of Northgate phase three within the city of Temple Bell County, Texas. That is the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve? I have a motion from Mr. Cowan, second from Mr. Camden. All in favor of the motion, raise a hand. Passes unanimously. Superintendent's report. Okay, good evening. Um, October 27th was our official TEA snapshot date. Um, that we've been talking about for some time now. We grew by approximately 3.8% this year. Our official student count um, for this school year was 11,535 students. That's 419 students over uh, last year's PEAMS snapshot date. Um, we currently have 5,526 elementary students. That was an increase of 195 new students this year, about 3.7% growth at the elementary level. At the middle school level, we have 2,639 students, an increase of 76 students over last year, about 3%. And at the high school level, we have 3,370 students uh, on snapshot date. 
which is 148 new students this year, about 4.6% growth at the high school level. Um, our UIL count that we submitted uh, was 3,366 students, slightly different than the total population, but you have some students less than full-time in that count. So uh, 3,366, uh, looks like we'll be 6A again. <laughs> Still big. Yeah. big, big and getting bigger. Um, we are 52.5% white, 33.6% uh, Hispanic, 7.7% African American, 1.6% Asian, 4.4% um, of our students are two or more races, um, about 6.7% of our student population is considered um, English language learners or limited English proficient, 7.8% um, of our students are military connected. 11.9% uh, of our student population is in special education, 8.3% are in our gifted and talented program, and we are sitting at 45.1% economically disadvantaged, which is almost even with last year. We were about 45% last year. So um, those are our numbers for this year, uh, pretty much in line with last year with some new students added into that. So percentages are fairly, uh, fairly similar. Um, next month, we'll have Templeton Demographics here to provide you with some new projections uh, with the, using those updated numbers for this school year, and we'll take a look at some of the new subdivisions in the area and where our growth is Great. occurring. Well, that's that's helpful and certainly this, timely. How does this uh, relate to our, his demographics prediction last year? Um, for this school year, ooh, good question. I don't have that number with me, um, Leo, but it would be on, at or above his projection, but I'd have like to look that up. Last year and a little above, so it, it kind of floats. Yeah, last year we weren't it'll, quite it'll as high. Take a two-year average. But, um, right sorry, I don't. Well, but that's a good question to him. Year, year before last, we were, exactly. we were right on, but I don't remember the exact number. Last year was a little bit number. the numbers yeah. either, but. That's a great question to ask him. Say yeah, how good I'll get you that information. Yeah, we're we're. We'll see how accurate he is. Yeah, well, we ask it's him. Good. Yeah, he's very good. They're but. very good. Um, we're typically spot on every three or four years. We have a bit of an anomaly like we did last year, and this year we're back up again. So, um, pretty predictable um, with those projections. Leon Heights Elementary Fire, as you know. Um, there was a small fire um, on the roof at Leon Heights Elementary on the evening of uh, Thursday, October the 26th. Um, there was minimal damage. Um, however, we did move classes to the administration building, uh, Bex and the Wall Street Auditorium on Friday, October the 27th. And I just want to thank all of our employees um, who made school happen over here on that day. Um, that, and, and I want to list some names specifically because we had a lot of people who pulled together to make that happen. Um, Dr. Deanna Lovesmith, Calvin Itz, Dr. Muller, Todd Schiller, Tiffany Weiss, Elizabeth Cox, Rob Pasichnik, Lucy Curley, David Bennett, Mike Nielsen, um, and all of our Leon Heights teachers who were just so flexible to bring things over here and have school, our custodians who helped us set up the classrooms. Um, and just, it took a lot of people um, to make that happen overnight, and we're just really appreciative of everyone, including our parents, um, who were so positive and supportive, and everyone just pulled together um, and worked diligently to take care of our children, um, and they did it very well on that Friday, so we were very proud of that. Um, the students were actively engaged in meaningful learning, and they kind of liked getting to come over here. It was a little bit of an adventure for them, and um, and we loved having them here as well. It was um, it was pretty neat to get to see the children. Um, I'd also like to thank the Belton Fire Department and the Belton Police Department. Um, they gave a strong response, and they've been excellent partners with us. So appreciate both of those departments. Well, I, there's uh, passing around some notes that the administration oh, got. I don't yeah. know if they've made it all the way to everybody, but the students wrote some thank you notes to the administration. Really cute uh, notes. I uh, hope you had a chance to see those, but I, I also came up because I wanted to see uh, children. They, it really was a great adventure, and it was exciting, but they were engaged, uh, and it, it was, uh, uh, I just want to add my commendation to you all. What a great effort to make what was could have been an unsettling day a fun and exciting learning day, and uh, I heard some kids say, oh, this is cool. 
you know, when you hear kids say this is cool, you know you've got them, uh, and and heard that several from several of them, and so they were excited and they were learning and they were engaged, and then they went back to school and didn't know anything was wrong. So our staff did a great job, and so really appreciate that. I got to observe a drawing lesson and um, art, an art lesson in uh, the room down the hall here, the big red room. Students never knew I was in the classroom. They were so engaged in drawing in that with that art lesson. So it was pretty fun to watch them. Um, personnel report. Um, we aren't asking you to improve uh, to approve any personnel this evening, but um, I did want to give you a bit of an update. Um, we did recently fill a nursing position at Chisholm Trail Elementary with Brianna Durden. Uh, Brianna Durden it replaced Allison Cook, who moved over to a vacant part-time position at Belton High School. Brianna has three years of experience and a nursing degree from Texas Tech University. Um, also wanted to mention that on November the 2nd, Calvin Itz attended the Texas State Job Fair in San Marcos. And today, Dr. Charlotte Trejo attended the Texas A&M University Job Fair. Um, and they were able to visit between them with over 20 teacher candidates. Um, and we'll be passing that information about those candidates along to our campus principals um, in preparation for the 2018-2019 school year. Uh, we have several open positions, uh, two at the high school, a math and a science, three at middle school, one of which is a new position, three at the elementary level, one is also a new position there. Um, one will be vacant at the end of the school year as the resignation um, for the end of the year, to fill, but it's, we, we've got it posted now, and then another position that's vacant at this time. So um, that's it. Great. Does anybody have any questions? Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, this is exciting. We've talked about this. We approved this plan, and so tonight we get to hear a little bit more about our blur blended learning <laughs> course and uh, online dual credit courses. This is part of our District of Innovation, and the best part is we've got students and their awesome teacher along with Dr. Love Smith. That's right. They are the best part. I'm, I'm going to go through my part quickly because I really would like for you to hear directly from um, them. So if you will recall... Um, we started talking about blended learning last year, and really what drove that initial thought and quest was our vision, and that vision is to prepare every student to um, excel in tomorrow's world, and that world is continually changing. And so if you'll recall, we started with our um, District of Innovation, and within that District of Innovation plan, one of our goals was to um, ask for the exemption from the minimum attendance for class credit. So um, there is an education code that asks or requires you to be in class for 90% of the time, and we wanted to waive that with a goal to provide students online dual credit so it could be scheduled throughout the day, and then also to develop a local um, a blended learning course. And so tonight we're going to talk about both of those initiatives, our online dual credit and then also our blended learning. Um, I'm not sure how, how um, up to speed everyone is on blended learning, but I want to make sure that when we talk about that, we understand where that's coming from and what that really means. And blended learning is really where you t give students an opportunity for both the face-to-face -face instruction time, and then also to have part of their learning on time. And we've accomplished that through both time and the place. And so we'll talk about that course. First, online dual credit. That's with our University of Texas at Permian Basin. We have 18 students, and they are currently taking those courses listed. This has enabled them to have flexibility throughout their day to take a course without it um, conflicting with any other opportunity, whether it's fine art, selective, an AP course that they wanted to take, they can take this any any period of the day. We also have, um, and so with that, they receive their learning completely online. And this right here is just um, the learning management system that they're using. They use um, Blackboard through the um, UT Permian Basin, and they're able to get on there, see their um, agenda, the syllabus, and then complete all learning um, directly with that professor. And then we've just given them the um, space and then any support. They can go ask a teacher if they need help in any of the English or if they need help with technology. But what we're really going to spend time talking about tonight is our blended learning opportunity. This um, is really innovative because what we did was we said we'd like to take a course 
We'd like to first find a teacher that would be um, willing to, to take this project on. And we found an incredible teacher at Belton High School, Barbara Epperson. And, and she said, you know what, I'll do it. I'll teach government in the fall. I'll teach economics in the spring. And she's going to design the course completely. So um, she was able to take what she felt like could be online learning. So we didn't go out and purchase a curriculum. She has developed everything. And then she would create class sessions. And so we gave high school students the flexibility to choose not to come to class every day, but to come twice a week. Um, we designed it to be either first period or last period um, because we still have some requirements with attendance rules and hours in the day that you have to be in school. And so Barbara got on Canvas. We have a learning management system that allowed her to create, and this is what kids would see. They could log in. They would see just very similar to that um, college online course. The difference between that course and this course is that students are coming in twice a week and she has class sessions with them, group work with them, um, and they are able to accomplish um, group projects in some face-to-face -face time. And then the rest of the time, they're on their own. Now I am, um, and so you can see here's another piece of um, that learning management system and what that looks like from the student perspective. So you can see what they see when they long in every day. Um, I've included a lot of quotes from what kids are saying about the course. And I'm going to follow up on those. But before I do that, I have three students that are here from the class. And I don't want to steal their thunder because they have prepared what they want to tell you about their experience. And so joining us tonight is um, Barbara Epperson, the teacher, and then Blayton Evans, Carla Garcia Mercado, and Jasper Osborne. And they are going to tell you their experience. I've asked them to introduce themselves when they come up to tell you the grade they're in their plans for the future, because I figure you might like to know where they plan to go from Belton, and then a little bit about their experience. And so I'm going to hand it over to them. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Excited to hear from you. You go first. Um, hi, I'm Jasper Osborne. I'm a senior at Belton High School. My goal for the future is I'm planning to be a child counselor when I'm older. So I'm planning to take and get my bachelor's degree. So um, I'm here to talk to you about the flexibility of the class. So basically, it reduces our stress level, so to speak. Um, we don't have to come to we don't have to come to class as you said as they said five days a week, and that really reduces stress level because you don't have as much work to do, so to speak. You have um, special things to do daily, like certain projects and daily assignments that you need to get done, but you still have your own time to do it, so to speak. Um, so you could sleep in if you need to, or you can come to school. I go to school my first period, and I still get my work done. But it also gives you time to get other work done, like major grades and stuff you need to do for your other classes, aside from what you need, still need to do in your government class. That's great. Flexibility. I'm Carla Garcia. I am a senior at Belton High School, and I plan to go to BYU University in Idaho to either do pre-med or some sort of English class. And I'm here to talk to you about uh, how it pertains to college preparation. And I feel like blended learning pertains to that because we are able to know what it's like to be in college without actually being in college yet. And we have somewhat of the same schedule as them. And while we go to class two days a week and then the other three, we have the time to do our coursework. And um, it's a really nice opportunity to be able to be one of the first students to do this because it sets my mind in the, in the right path for when I go to college next year. So. Great. Thank you, Carl. Hello. Uh, my name is Blaine Evans. Um, I'm a senior this year. Uh, I don't really have an exact plan on where I'm going, but I know it's going to be eventually in the medical field. 
Um, I'm here to talk to you today about how it kind of applies to us working students or students with like other responsibilities outside of the classroom. So um, I think this classroom kind of lets us become more productive and independent thinkers and gives us sort of that sense of freedom in order to um, effectively work on, so work on assignments outside of class. So I work at the Belton Swim Center in the mornings, so sometimes I won't exactly have the time to uh, get everything done the night before or get you know the right amount of sleep. So with this first period off, it kind of helps um, helps me manage like my sleeping schedule and <laughs> if I don't finish all my assignments the night before. Mm. So it all just sort of depends on how I manage my time. So it kind of gives me that sense of responsibility before I go off to college. Great, great. I just wanted to say thank you all so much for trusting me to be able, because Dr. Love Smith and um, Ms. Ross and Dr. Dubois um, and Kim Christie just gave me complete trust uh, to create the course. And I really appreciate that for the freedom that I have in Belton ISD that a lot of people I know in other districts don't have that freedom. So I appreciate that freedom that I have. Um, and my students are amazing. They do amazing things. And it's nice to see the responsibility and then be able to step up to the plate. Um, and then there's not, there's a few that sometimes don't. Um, but then I can track them down because they're still in high school and I know their schedule and I will be at their door. Um, so I love that part of it too. Uh, so it's kind of a nice bridge for when they're actually on their own because they're not there yet, even though these three are so close. I mean, a semester away at work at 5 a.m. and things like that. So I, that was kind of what I just wanted to say. Thank you all for that. It is amazing. I just want to thank you. Uh, for all, just as a reminder, Barbara Epperson, Master Teacher, Secondary Teacher of the Year a couple years ago, she is uh, extraordinary in the classroom, right, guys? Yes. But willing <laughs> to be innovative and creative and take a, a concept, an idea that Dr. Lovesmith and, and everybody dreams up and say, how do we implement that and make it really work uh, is significant. I, I have a question, though, I, and you may have said this earlier, how many students are in the class? Um, so there's 35 total. My first period is a lot bigger um, than my eighth period, just because with seniors and schedules and sports and things like that. Yeah. So there, but there's 35 total. There's 35 total in both sections. Um, and, and maybe to the students, just a follow-up question. Um, compared to a class, if you were taking this course as a regular class, the best part is the flexibility. I've heard several of you mention different ways, independence and flexibility and all. Is that the really what stands out about it? Is it just you have you get to work with Ms. Epperson? Both. <laughs> Both. Uh, okay. okay, that was a setup, but <laughs> but the flexibility is clearly a, a priority yeah. for you and the independence and the And gives us a sense of responsibility. Okay. Okay. Ms. Epperson is also a good teacher because she worked with Sue on tape. Yeah. And she doesn't come to us as some of the other teachers do. Are you learning the material? Yes. <laughs> Do you feel like you're able to learn the material in a better way with this method, in addition to managing your time and doing the projects and all, but are you learning? The yes, material? because I would say we're learning because we both do it in class. We do notes and uh, like bow work and stuff like that, but we also have our own separate projects that we do and research our own. And I would say we're definitely learning the material. In those two days we meet, I mean, if we do have questions on the assignments that are outside of class, she will answer. Well, well, this was you're our first group to do this, and so there's a lot on you to blaze the trail and be pioneers on this, but it sounds like you're doing it very well. So proud of y'all. Anybody else have any comments or questions? I just want to add um, that we, we, when we went through the District of Innovation process, we, um, we took it very seriously, and we had teachers at the table who wanted to try some new things. Um, and we talked a lot about the kids and what the kids might like and um, what kids need when they graduate from high school. And so I think it's really great that you're learning to manage your time now um, before you graduate and getting, getting to try something innovative. And um, thank you, Mrs. Epperson, for doing that. I know you transitioned the students at the beginning of the school year, um, and you did that quite masterfully. So appreciate it. Bridge is a good word I heard. Yeah. Okay. 
So the overwhelming comments from students were um, definitely aligned to what they said tonight in terms of preparing them for that bridge for when they go to college. Um, and that's what you'll see in the statements that are in the presentation. Also, um, just so you'll know that the students today were asking for more. Ah. And um, so they, we've taught, we talked today. And then what was also exciting is that um, rumor had gotten out that I was coming to the class this morning and another teacher was there to let me know her interest ah. and teaching um, an English section next year. And so I definitely believe that when we bring to you the course catalog to, in January, we will um, propose an expansion of this and, and an opportunity for more students to take it. To have 35 students, almost two sections our first year is a strong interest. Absolutely. And so we're excited to see where this goes. Great job, guys. Appreciate y'all. That's so exciting. It's so exciting to see innovative new programs take off and provide these wonderful opportunities. Well, talk about exciting. Let's get an update on our bond projects. Jared, it's good to see you back. All vacationed out and ready to work? Absolutely. We've been working hard over the last uh, month, uh, a lot on the projects, on all, all four of them. So uh, it's been a busy time here. So as a great. I'm sure they you brought some toys to with you. We did bring a few toys with us, but that's not about the Brown Project update just yet. Okay. Uh, we do want to start off with element, Elementary School 11, Wall Street Auditorium, and the Lakewood Elementary Music Classroom and Gymnasium Edition. Uh, those we brought to you last month and sure the mic's on. in the previous month. A bit. Can everybody Thank hear me? Uh, and so we approved those uh, for design development. We published contract documents, and those are currently out to bid. Uh, so we're, those are on the street. We're getting a lot of participation from uh, the Belton community. So see a lot of questions coming from subcontractors as well as general contractors for the projects. Uh, so we'll start seeing that a lot. Uh, those are bidding, uh, it, the last of those bids this week. Uh, so we're setting up with the district evaluation criteria, uh, ranking those and starting to put it together interviews, uh, all in preparation uh, over the next month and a half to bring back an approval of rankings in December to the board uh, for those three projects. Uh, and then, you know, basically that, that's carrying forward what we got approved. You see the images there on the bottom of the elementary school, Lakewood, and the Wall Street Auditorium. So that's it in a quick summary on those projects. That's the feel for the bidding. Overall, uh, a lot it, of bidders interested. Uh, in actually, yes, uh, surprisingly so. So we had uh, eight bidders on the two projects, uh, and then we are looking here on the elementary school. We have a lot of local bidders uh, as well. I think there were eight to ten who have viewed the plans. So we'll see what that turns into as well uh, come bid day. Great. Well, that's that's good news. Okay. Right. Looking forward to say that'll be at our December meeting. We'll get to hear the results. That is correct. That something exciting. We're excited. Bring us a Christmas present. Uh, that's the goal. <laughs> Three of them. So, any other questions about the Mon Project update? We want to get to the toys. Okay, the toys. <laughs> <laughs> They're playing behind you. It's, you know, it's hard. I to know, I know. So, uh, Lake Belton High School. So, uh, on the previous projects, we brought design development, and that's roughly about 60% of the way through the design process. <laughs> So tonight we're bringing to you the Lake Belton High School. The, uh, we're bringing uh, three major or two major areas. One are the drawings and specifications, and the other are exterior and interior images with material palettes. Uh, so we have the drawings and specifications. We won't bore you with, with those. There's about 650 pages of drawings as it stands right now, and about 2,000 drawing uh, specs. Uh, those have been provided to the district for review. So we've, uh, Lou's been uh, coordinating that amongst the district and review staff. And then we've also been able to give it to the construction manager at risk for their review and constructability input. Uh, from the exterior and interior material palettes, you'll see those kind of come to life, but there on the table uh, to, to your left are those samples that we're looking at tonight. Uh, to give you a brief uh, history of the project, I'm going to turn it over to Rebecca to talk about uh, the plan here as we go through. Okay, good evening. Is this, where is my, uh, right here? All right. And back. Okay. <laughs> All right, good evening. I know that many of you have seen the site plan and floor plans before, but uh, for some of you that may not have had that opportunity yet, 
just kind of wanted to uh, briefly run through them again. And you can see that uh, this is 2483. Please be sure to do that on both screens so everybody has you. Thank you. Yes, right here. This is 2483. 317 is right here. And this is the current High Point Elementary School. <clears throat> this yellow. Um, Look at us. You have to do it twice. <laughs> oh, two twice? Yeah. Both screens. Twenty four eighty three. Twenty four eighty three, three seventeen. Okay, okay, kinda of go back and forth. Okay, I'm sorry. So twenty four eighty three, three seventeen, twenty four eighty three, three seventeen, high point elementary school. And then the yellow uh, shape right here, that is the actual building. And there's four points of entry off of twenty four eighty three. There is the bus entry, the main visitor and entry parent drop-off, and two student entries. Those are one, two, three, no, four. And uh, the student entries are uh, on the left-hand portion. There's about 600 parking spaces for the students. And the student entry is actually right here. And then the main entry into the school is right, is right here. So there is what we call Main Street. There's a, a connecting corridor that, that links these two, and you can see a little bit better in the floor plan in a minute. But just uh, overall, very quickly, this is the track and field in this area. Then we have the baseball, softball, and tennis. Baseball, softball, and tennis. And then these are uh, practice fields right here. And this, uh, this area of parking also uh, doubles as the band practice field. And the, uh, the parking for the staff is, is distributed around. And then we also, because there is a, the way the levels of the contour works on the site, uh, instead of the building going up a floor, it goes down a floor. So this portion is two levels right here. And then there, because of that offset happens, it creates a, a multi-level courtyard, which you'll see in a minute here. All right, so this brings us to the floor plan. So that main entry that we were just looking at is right here. And what I refer to as Main Street, all I go is here. And it's just a, uh, a wide corridor that, uh, that goes through the entire building. Uh, it's 16 feet at its, uh, at its uh, narrowest width, and it opens up uh, periodically. But you come into the, to the main building, and there's admin and the red, and the library and the yellow. Uh, coming on down this direction is your fine arts. There's the black box, the auditorium, and band, choir, um, orchestra are back here. So coming through here, there is the black box, auditorium, band, choir, and orchestra. And then the art. The art is ni nicely positioned in the front here. The green is the athletic. There's the main gym, a, a auxiliary gym. And there's uh, transparency. There's glass views into it. Then there's dressing and support for athletics, and then there are two weight rooms back in this area, as well as uh, two little meeting rooms. Uh, to the other side of the building is the academic core. There are two learning communities. These are two levels, one on each end. And uh, in there, they are uh, 15 classrooms in each one of the learning communities, and they are supported by some commons areas that uh, you'll get to see a little bit better close-up look at our interior shots. Um, this is the science area. There are two areas, what we call super labs. There are flex labs, and there are some classrooms that support the super labs. And um, then on the lower level, uh, again, the learning communities, and there's a dining commons in here, and the uh, CTE areas in this area right here and the uh, special education area right here. And that. Any questions on floor plan, site plan? Looks like what we've seen before, is that right? Nothing uh, did change yeah, talk, from? Talk a little bit about meeting the regional needs. Yes, yes, and as we've uh, continued to develop, we've continued to meet with the, the user groups, we've continued to meet with uh, uh, the fine arts uh, representatives and the food services and uh, science and athletics and different groups. So we've continued those meetings to bring, to layer another level of detail onto each of one of those areas. So where we started out first talking about just spatial relationships, we've been talking about uh, 
the very fine details of uh, the marker board and this location and you know those types of uh, uh, of details at level. It seems it wasn't that long ago, but it's been a while. We started talking about well, everybody wanted access to everything. So who mm -hmm. gets to be closest? Well, everybody wanted to be mm -hmm. close, and then mm -hmm. what's next to what? And, mm -hmm. and then it was well, how do you create sound barriers so that you don't mm -hmm. you know noise bleed over and all? And so those things have all been addressed. We're really down to. We're down to detail. yes. We're down to a uh, a much uh, a much tighter level of detail. Absolutely. Great. Okay. So uh, Rebecca's done a great job of meeting with all the teachers. We've probably met with uh, twenty to thirty teachers again uh, in round robin to go through those details about where plugs are, uh, lights are, that kind of thing, uh, which is really adding that next level of detail in terms of the design. Uh, and so then I want to rewind just a little bit and talk about where we were uh, and then kind of where we're headed. And so when we originally met with the district, we talked about some imagery that was liked, uh, some of the massing, the colors, and how we are articulating the building. Uh, that, of course, in turn uh, started informing what the design of the building wanted to look like. Uh, and these are the images that were presented to the board at the schematic design level. Uh, and so today we actually have the opportunity to bring forth a, a design uh, that's really that next iteration of design that is really bringing all those parts and pieces together uh, that are talking about material and shape. Uh, so if you look on screen, there's actually a different image, uh, mostly because it's very large, but of the rendering. So this is coming from, from the entry going along the parent drive. Uh, you've got the art courtyard there on the right and the main entry of the building there on the left. So the, uh, And then as we kind of turn and look back, that would be the performing and fine arts area. Uh, and then as we start moving to the left, this will be the learning communities uh, from this side. So then this is continuing around the building. This is the, the learning communities and moving around to the career and technical education. So as we talk about partners coming into the school, they'll really come into this entrance here. Uh, they're at the east end of the building. They'll have associated parking. Uh, and then this is coming up into the bus, bus drop-off loop. So when we talk about the courtyard and creating an academic entry, that's really focused here on this side of the building here. Uh, and so then looking the tall mass at the center of the screen right now is the library. And we're kind of panning around and looking at that cafeteria. So it becomes a very activated space, uh, becomes an opportunity not only for uh, socializing, but learning uh, and then as well as food. So then the, the kind of school pride area is really that connection of the athletic stadium to the building. Uh, and so you'll see then here we have the track surface and as we're adjusting the grading, we're starting to create that plaza effect. So you can have multiple views, multiple opportunities uh, with this main entry then from the athletic side, which is really fed from the student parking, which you would see to your left. And then this is really getting into the student the entry. Uh, yes, so we have some preliminary imagery uh, of the Broncos from Lake Belton High School. Uh, and then as we work back around, this is the Auditorium and Performing Arts Center. Uh, and then we come back around to the parent loop back to the front entry of the school. So the images you see here really speak to the materials uh, that are on the building. And I'll, I'll point things out here. I think we're we're thinking really hard on the computer side. Uh, this is a, a brick material, and you'll see down here on the table, there's the brick right there. Can you there. hold that up or do something? Can yeah. You, I can't see that. Uh, so, so we've got three predominant materials on the exterior, which are kind of a, a red brick, I'll call it, uh, which Vanna is holding up right now. Red brick. Red is good. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Vanna Rebecca. And then we've got a limestone material, which is, uh, if you want to point that one out, so it'd be your kind of traditional Austin White or cream limestones, uh, trying to go for more of the tan, uh, kind of red rust hues within there. Where that is? That's around the so front side. Well, that's what you're seeing side. right here and right here. Oh, that is. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. So that's the the metal or the, sorry, that's stone. Sorry, I'm already thinking about metal panel. Yeah. Sorry. I thought that was metal panel, but it's not. I moved on. So then we have metal panel, which is a uh, gabalume color, which is that gray. So yes, let me see if I can uh, rewind here. Here we go. Can you do that again? Yep. Yeah. Kind of maybe 
point out where like that metal well, here. is? How's this? Uh, so we have some still images here. Uh, so we've got the, uh, the brick right here. We have the metal panel up above, which would continue along this ribbon. And then this is the administration core in the background. <laughs> So we've got brick, metal panel, and then stone here on this side. Uh, and you start seeing that as well here, like at the CTE entrance, this is stone here on the right uh, that are various locations around. And so then it, three, three main materials on this one. Cool. Very nice. Yeah. You like it? You like it? Nice, simple, nice. Beautiful. I have a question on the, the field. Mm -hmm. uh, Looking at the drawing here, or the this rendering here of the stadium, there's just one stands. Have there been any discussions about? I know, you know, as my son just graduated from athletics last year, and he played under, you know, JV and freshman. The least favorite thing I ever had was sitting on the same sides as the opponent's parents. Yep. I just never liked it at all. I just never thought it was a real good idea. You know, maybe putting the concessions in the middle where both sides could come to the bathroom and the concessions. Have we thought about maybe separating them? So th there's been a lot of discussion about the stadium and going through there. So right now we actually have a building that's right here. That would be your ticket concession entry. And we've master planned the site ac across several different venues from, you can see a third practice field here, four more tennis courts here. And then as well as from the grandstands, <laughs> we have enough space here to make it similar to the Belton High School Stadium. So seating for 8,000. We're trying to make sure that when we think 30, 40 years in the future, we have the space. Right now, the discussion has been the stands are, are on one side uh, and they're seating for 2,000. So it'd be most similar to Wilson Kersey Field uh, at that point. We do have the storage underneath. So we're trying to create as many future possibilities, but right now we're focused uh, on the budget and providing with one stand on the what west side and one other thing is the baseball and softball i know with having jv and freshman and varsity they all practice i think now i guess at the same time is there a uh, room for a second practice field not lights and stadium or anything just second practice field for those sports so, so there's not currently uh what you see on the site and i'll, I'll point out some of the the options is they the, there is a lot of area for practice fields here so there could be something developed in one of these locations but you'll see that there's a slightly darker area here in these th three spots, which is one, two, and three, and that's used for detention on site. Uh, so, I mean, you can imagine the size of that baseball field. It's, it's about 100,000 square feet of space uh, to get four of them on there. Uh, is fairly rare within a high school level, uh, but there, you could do an infield somewhere or something like that. If infield. I've seen that. I've yeah. seen an extra infield, yeah, just a practice field. field. Mm -hmm. And there, there might be room out there. There's definitely room for it if that's something that's desired by the district. Okay. So we, we do have... Run that, run that thing again for us? But, sure. But go ahead and talk well, about the toys. While that's going around, uh, we well, do have a toy. A suit. Oh, no, so, we want to hold it after you. So you go Never mind. Right. So this one well, you... Do it. Just push it up to your face. That's the touch panel. So when you're done looking at that image, it'll take a minute, then you can go ahead and forward to that. And I'll go to the next. <laughs> Dr. Kincaid's got it down. <laughs> she can help you. What am I doing? Oh, to look. Ooh. It's very cool. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> hey, that's cool. We make a motion to end the meeting. Okay, I'm good. What am I supposed to do now? We have a touch swipe panel on the side. Oh, that. S swipe. So we, we have a couple images, one of the front entry and one of the uh, oh, student commons that you can see at. Cool. Really get a sense for the space and the design that's been put in, in those areas. Okay, this is sweet. Yeah, I'm busy for a while. I hope you all have a nice meeting. Oh, my. Okay, I'll have to share. Oh, wow, look at that. Can everybody see? Who wants to be next? <laughs> oh, that's cool. Could you bring us like seven of those? We can. <laughs> we, it's only the, the interior. Right side. Mm -hmm. And then what? Now just move. Swipe forward to back. Or back to forward if you really swipe from <laughs> Okay. So any questions, comments on the exteriors as we go through those?
I'm happy with the exterior. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. It's nice. You. So then what we wanted to do is go ahead and transition to the interior design as well, which is the other half of the building to really give you a perspective of uh, what that's gonna look and feel like for the students. So again, same thing, going down memory lane, we started out back with the administration and staff doing a sort of likes and dislikes, what sort of feeling of things do we want once we have you know, this great program that we've worked with you all to achieve, how does that wanna look and feel? Um, and from there, We've really come a long way. Uh, so this is the top image is right when you walk through the front door at that main entry. So you can see how the building, you come in on the upper level and you can see down into the lower level. There's big floor to ceiling glass along that um, dining space area. Over to the right, that's where the library, there's the porch area there. Along the left is one branch of Main Street. And actually in these views, you're moved up a little bit further so you can see left and right on Main Street. Um, so just a lot, of connect a lot of connectivity between the entire school. So when you walk into this school, you can look left, see all the learning commons, look right, see that student entry, and know exactly where you are. Uh, this soffit that you see coming in, it runs from outside all the way through the campus and then out through the back. So that front and back connection is really strong. Awesome. <laughs> uh, the image on the bottom left is inside of the library. So to your left is full ceiling looking into that courtyard space again. Image in the center is that student entry lobby. Uh, there's another view of that on here. So to the left is what you're seeing is the trophy case for that fine arts area. And then the entry into the auditorium and the black box over to the right. That wood that's framing across there, it's framing the gym opening, so lots of glass and transparency into those spaces. Really active space right there. Uh, and then a view of the auditorium from inside, <laughs> carrying some of the same language that we see throughout the rest right. of the campus. <laughs> so it's polished concrete throughout. It, it does render a bit funny, but we do have polished concrete throughout the floors um, within most of the facility. Uh, so the image on the top is the learning center. So this is right when you walk into the middle of that learning space. You can barely see a little bit of the red on the right. That's that teacher think tank. So that's their housing and a little bit of what their view would be like. So we've got part of that distributed dining that we're seeing on the left. Uh, that classroom right there opens up into that space. So teachers have the flexibility for a large group gathering right there. Uh, and then you can see just the variety of styles of learning that could happen in that center space. Uh, the classrooms push and pull a little bit, so there's always great visibility and everything, but you can create your own nook, which we know is really important for education. Image on the bottom left is the super labs. That's walking down Main Street. And so those super labs, they poke out just a little bit, just to give you that illusion so you really feel like you're interactive and part of that environment. Same thing with the CTE image on the right side. There's that bench that's sort of inset into there and then lots of views. Um, when you can look at this view a bit larger, you can see there's garage doors that lead into, this is the center shared shop. And then there's another shop behind that one. And there's garage doors that open up into all of it. So they can really open up this space, segment it off. It's a really active space that gives the teachers and students a lot of flexibility. Um, and really, it puts it on display. That's, I think, our favorite part is just knowing that the students are going to be able to walk down and see all of these great things, like all these recognitions that we see. They'll be able to see that happening live every day, and that's pretty cool. Um, I think that's all on our interiors. So we did bring so some. Kind of, you got colors. And <laughs> so we talked the, a lot about colors with us. So. So for those of you at home or kind of on your device now, if you go to BISD and you look at the agenda, if you click on those links or you have a VR scanner, you can scan those barcodes on the screen and do it yourself. With your oh, phone. really? All right. If you all so you can take it home. Smartphones. And this is on our website, by the way. That's correct. I'll bring this over. We met with, most recently, this was the silver that was... Okay. Varieties of grays and silvers. Well, and this actual silver. And then we brought some grays that transition once it okay. gets to non-metallic. The silver, okay. when it's not metallic, that's, the the that's what gray. we want to call our silver mm -hmm. now. 
And then this is the official Delta Does that fit that, that uh, Nike, whatever word that is? No. No. <laughs> That's an almost a black. <laughs> looks very dark. Okay. Yeah. And then these are just accent colors throughout that yeah. aren't so much a color. We still so basically we're palette. doing grays and neutrals with red. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be pops Works of for me. red. And then we'll be Lots pops of, red. of the actual metallic <laughs> silver. And as you notice, Jane has already started integrating the uh, iconography within the school uh, iconography or the imagery, the graphics. Oh, I, uh, so, okay, I got you. Yes. So we have the red there, of course, on, on the bottom image. Or you can't quite see it, but up here on the top left, there's some quotes, and it says Lake Belton High School here on the back. So that's here and here. So you're starting to see that integrated throughout the facility to really bring that branding and that imagery to life. Uh, somebody mentioned the uh, horseshoe prints uh, that that are, I was, oh, yeah, yeah, in the bottom image. So in this I image right that. here, Where? there are, there are horse, they're down the hallway, Link. I missed that. Down in that extracurricular zoom space. Or I'm going to have to <laughs> zoom in. I didn't see that one. <laughs> yeah, so really working to integrate that. <laughs> That's cute. I hadn't seen, I missed that in the pictures. So any, any questions about the interiors here before we move on? No, I, again, I really like the colors. I, I like how it, um, I like how it, how I say this, now? it looks like it will last too. It's not, it's not mm -hmm. trendy like, oh, this is the fad of the year and next year we'll go, e. It, it's got some lasting. Well, that's so 2018. <laughs> exactly. We we want to we approve it now, and we open the school, and they say, "What were y'all think? This this looks like it's standard, and but it's interesting." And no ship lap. Yeah. No yeah. ship lap. That's funny. Good one. So then the the other parts so we have uh, the contract documents. We. Oh, that's cool. We have the exteriors, the interiors. The other part that we wanted to hit on uh, tonight is as we've been working with the construction manager at risk, they've gone through an estimating, and right now we're very comfortable in terms of where we're at. Uh, and so one of the things that we wanted to speak to is, is what we call base bid and alternates. And so base bid is what is included in the bid on bid date, and it sets the, the minimum bar for everything to, to bid on. Alternate bids have it have the option of adjusting that scope up or down uh, And so traditionally we try and do those as add alternates uh, you get the best value that way uh, from a, a contract uh, a cost standpoint uh, And it's a way that come bid day uh, whether you're lo low or high you can adjust the bid at at bid date and get competitive pricing for those things and so basically what we've been doing is we've started a list here uh, of things that are desired from the district. And some of these are kind of wish list items. Other ones are, hey, it'd be really good to have this. And so what we've done is create an initial prioritization uh, with the five on the left being what we've heard is the highest priority for alternate bids of a, if things turn out favorable, these are the things that we would like to buy uh, if that were the case. We've also heard from the ones on the right, these are also nice things uh, that we would like to have. In the end, uh, what we have to do is we have to document these within the, the contract documents to be able to get effective pricing. Uh, so for example, uh, if you wanted artificial practice fields, we would need to show in the drawings, base bid would be natural turf and alternate bid would be artificial practice fields. So right now, the, the five on the left are ones that we're planning to move forward with, uh, the ones on the right we currently have pricing, some general pricing from the construction manager at risk, but we would need to carry those through in the documents in the end. So what we wanted to be able to offer the board is the opportunity to provide input on these two lists, and is there any adjustments that we would want to make between the two lists of alternates? Let me, I, I want to, and I'm going to have to defer to Coach Morgan, the tennis courts has been one we've talked about several times. Now, I, do we have eight courts in the base? That is correct. And we have eight courts at Belton High School, <coughs> and what we keep talking about is we need 10 courts, both places, right, in order to accommodate our, high, our middle school programs and not have to use UMHB so that, um, but we have it master planned that they're there. The question is, do we build it now? But that's been the, the ongoing, uh, kind of bring back the discussion. We've had 
for years we've had discussion about adding tennis courts at middle schools. We have so many students, we're having to transport them to UMHB. We're using staggered schedules and trying to do all that. But the thinking is if we can have two fully functional tournament ready complexes, then we can use those two and not have to build them at middle school. Am I saying that right? But we need 10 courts to have that full tournament, the full practice, because then it somehow it divides up. I don't remember how, but it works, right, with the two middle schools and the high school yeah. with 10. But it doesn't work with eight, right? I guess the and, – and just to add to that, my thinking and the discussions were, when we brought up this up before, if we do 10 here, we are – we have to commit ourselves to doing two more at Belton High School to have equity in that because it balances and it makes sense. So to me, that's been a priority on our capital projects list for several years. We've gone back and forth on middle school or high school, but this was the answer. And to me, that's higher. Now, I, uh, Jared, if you can go back to that list, I, I'm not sure how the, those things got ranked or who, who I did those. They're in rank order. They're not in rank order? I don't think so. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Just at glancing at the list, I'm just going to tell you from, from the feedback I've heard from all our discussions, I'm not sure what the parking space capacity is and where the additional will go, so maybe that's going back to, but to me the tennis court accomplishes what we've been talking about for years for our middle school as well as high school. Aren't you going to get pricing on all of these projects? Uh, so the five on the left right now, we would get pricing for those. Okay. So we would get the price to go from eight to ten quarts. So they'll be able to see that when they, when they talk about the guaranteed maximum okay. price. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so are you asking us, do we want potential alternates also bid or to move over? Is, it, that what, is there any that are a priority to the board that we would want to see a price at bid date? Any on the left or any on the right? Uh, on the ones on the left, so the alternates included are ones that we're going to document now to find out what the price is at bid day. The ones on the right, we are not currently planning to document. So if you you identified an orchestra shell or whatever that was, if that was a priority, uh, it helps acoustics within the auditorium. Okay. <laughs> For the orchestra. What, uh, I, I don't know what CAT 6A at all that outlets means either. It's the type of cabling. Cable? Very expensive, too. Okay. I would think that CAT 6A might be something we really want to look at. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's already top of the line now, so 20 years from now, we're still going to be using the high school. So, it's right. It's a whole lot easier to pull wire now than it is after the fact. And part so to explain the base bid right now is six A to the wireless access points, which is kind of your highest throughput right now, and okay. then to your wah outlets it's Cat six, okay. which doesn't necessarily have as much. Uh, we are talking the uh, one of the directors wanted fiber to his desktops because of the media that he was using, so we're kind of very strategically locating that that due to the expense. Okay. And uh, it says concrete paving in lieu of asphalt paving. What's the testing look like out there? Uh, testing pretty close. Uh, I so think it's three or four feet down. Yeah. Is the band practice lot on there? I can't remember. It, it is base bid. It is on the in the mm -hmm. base bid. We've talked about. I want to make sure. Okay. Yeah, it's shared with parking. That was what Rebecca had pointed out on the student parking. You have the main right. lot, and then right below that was a sec separate segment uh, that will gates on it to prevent parking on the normal basis, but it could be used as overflow. Where does the increased parking spaces? In between the water tower and the student parking. That okay. We planned it for 1,000, and we basically eliminated 100 spots in, in a row that could be easily added at a later date as well. Okay. So, so the qu okay. So you don't really need us to talk about the left side. We're going to get those. Unless you wanted to eliminate one. No, we would never add tennis courts, that kind of thing. Okay. So the question is, is there anything on the right side that we want? And I heard y'all saying the F cat 6A is something we may want and might as well go ahead and put it on as a bid. Why not? Sure. Well, I, I think we need to know if we need it. Doc, Dr. Muller's worked with technology, so I'd want him, someone to speak to that before you decided that was a priority for you.
to that's that. That's in floor. the basement. That or not. So we do have six A to the wireless access. Select points, yeah. correct. Not to and the so data outlet. To all data outlets, keyword all. So that, that was what Dr. Muller said, that uh, the district's third-party consultant, EPS, uh, evaluated it and had provided a recommendation for 6A to the wireless access points and a couple other locations. I don't think it's worth pricing at this point. It's a whole lot cheaper at this point than it is later. See what it costs? Well, yeah, it's not going to add any cost to get it as a bid. An no, that one's easy. Yeah, sure. Okay. Why not? I'm not sure what saline water repellent for exterior facade means, but silane. We're, we're currently pricing that on the elementary school, so there's some discussion whether or not the district would like that. It basically provi provides water protection and helps prevent staining on the exterior materials. So a lot of times you'll see where there's sprinkler head uh, patterns on the wall uh -huh. or you get uh, it start the limestone starts turning black. It helps yeah. prevent that. Yeah. So, But it has to be reapplied every 10 years. Uh, yeah. <coughs> That's something we can add at any time. Yeah, you can do that later. That's probably not a necessarily a cheaper thing. Okay. Any anything else anybody wants? No. Okay, so we're gonna move F over to number six. Yep. And bring us those alternates and looks good. What will do. What are your conversations like now? Are you thinking about uh, budget related? Uh, are, are we looking good as far as budget concerned? Right, right now, we're at a good spot uh, with the project, so we don't want to add too much and we don't want to deduct too much. So uh, I tell people we're in a nice spot. Just stay float right where we're at for the next three, four or five months. Okay. That's good. That's good to know. We've wondered with the hurricane pricing and yeah. impact. So Bartlett Cox staying on top of that. I know Mark's here uh, representing them, so he's been doing a good job uh, of keeping us apprised of what's been happening. Uh, which really leads into the next steps. Uh, so in December, we are looking to publish 50% CDs. So that would be the next phase in the drawings. Those will again go to the district for review and the construction manager at risk for pricing. So it'll be our next chance to review that. Uh, then in turn, we'll look in March uh, to publish the contract documents and that will be when it officially goes out to bid and get real pri hard pricing from subcontractors go through an evaluation process and look in the April time frame to come bring a GMP for your review and approval, uh, which would come with the recommended subs, prices, everything else, and the amendment to the contract for Bartlett Cock. So. Great. Anybody having questions? Looks good. That, Thank that, you. Thanks for bringing the toys. Absolutely. So that that's the high school update for design development approval. It's a... Uh, certainly a, a project that we can be proud of. It's exciting to see how the design of a building can engage our students, um, similar to the way that a blended learning project can engage our students. It's what we're doing at, at Belton High School, and we want to do it like Belton High School, is engage our students in active learning and be excited about going to school. Yep, so absolutely. We're going to accomplish that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Dr. Muller, do you need to tell us we need to approve this, right? So what we're looking for is to approve the design development for Lake Belton High School as presented and authorize Connell Robertson to proceed with the construction document phase. Is anything you need to add? Um, would entertain a motion. Have a motion <coughs> for Ms. Jordan, second for Mr. Taggart. Any other comments or questions? All in favor of the motion, raise a hand. Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Great job. Like what we're doing. Oh, Dr. King Cannon's going to go to the podium. <laughs> okay, well, we had so much fun naming a school last month <laughs> that we want to do some more. And we, we talked about this. We're not actually going to name one tonight, but we do need to continue the discussion about naming our new elementary school. We no, do. We do. You heard um, Jared say that we're expecting those bids back on the elementary school and we'll be bringing those to you in December. So we're planning to start construction in the spring um, on our new elementary school um, in so that we can get it ready in time for the 2019-2020 school year. Um, we do have an address for the new school. It will be located at 8402 Poison Oak Road. Um, and we've spent a little bit of time thinking about the name of the school. Um, we looked at the environmental site assessment, which provides uh, some history of the property. Um, and that assessment indicated that the property was used primarily for agricultural purposes, and it was um, reportedly a horse farm. 
Um, there are also some people who are knowledgeable about the history that have reported that the subdivision name Carriage House came from a weather vane of a horse and a carriage um, that was found on an old barn on the property. There were several, uh, uh, reportedly several uh, horse barns on the property. So there was a carriage house weather vane on the one of those property, one of those barns. Um, and supposedly some of the street names um, in that subdivision are named for carriages found in London. Uh, Ridge, and then uh, just some additional information, Ridgeway Drive predates the carriage house subdivision and was named by the developers of the Oak Hills subdivision. Um, a homeowner, I spoke to a homeowner who's lived on Poison Oak Road for 20 years, um, who told me that the homes were built on uh, the ridge above the river and that the area used to suffer significant flooding before the dam was built. Um, and several street names in that area include the word ridge in them, Ridgeway, Trail Ridge, Laurel Ridge. Um, in addition, the area around the school is also considered a part of the watershed for Hogpen Creek, um, which was used for a street name behind Chuck's Barbecue and on Pea Ridge and West Adams. And so to date, we have had a few suggestions and um, we wanted to share those with you this evening um, and to hear what ideas you have and um, hear your opinions of those names that have been sent to us. Um, Carriage House Elementary, Charter Oak Elementary, Live Oak Elementary, and River Ridge Elementary. Okay, well, who's got some ideas you want to throw out? Janet, you got a couple yeah, of more want to throw in the hopper, I know? Yeah, I, there's a couple more that I, I've been tossing around. I really like, I mean, there's quite a few that are good. Um, there's one I really don't like, but I really like several of them, so I could go a lot of different ways. But I really enjoy the idea of, of having oak somewhere in that, in the name, just because of where it is. I mean, the, the, just the whole topography or geography, you know, where, you know, the location of it is, is in the oak trees. So the reason I like Charter Oak is just because it kind of honors a historical event that took place in our community. So that there's a history behind Charter Oak. Um, it can easily be Googled and the kids could celebrate that in their school and learn all about it and keep that history alive. Um, I also would like to entertain Oak Hills. I know that's not the subdivision that it's in, but it, it really has a nice ring for an elementary, Oak Hills Elementary. I, I believe. And then um, Heritage Elementary, something like that along those lines would be fine, but I really like the word oak in it. Oak. I'm, uh, just a, a question. It's on Poison Oak. Does it, con and there is a Charter Oak Road not far from there. Um, does that create confusion for you? It, uh, Charter Oak on Poison Oak, but it's not on Charter Oak. That's a different road. Is that a concern? It doesn't concern me, but it also it's it's okay. near Oak Hills, and Oak Hills isn't a street. Oak Hills is a subdivision. Is there not? I an just Oak wrote Hills down road? Oak Ridge. Oak, Oak Ridge. Is, yeah, Oak. So there's is Oak Hills not a road? I don't Oak know. Hills is the, the name, name of the subdivision, the subdivision but I don't. Over, I don't know that it's. It's Carriage House, and then Oak Hills is correct. It's closer to 317, up north. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It does. Um, so, yeah, we, uh, and that's the history. And Jen and I actually talked about that, that when we moved Tarver, we've got Tarver's not on Tarver, and that's, a, that's an issue. What other names do y'all want to throw in and thoughts? Anybody got any? Anything standing out? I, I understand uh, some folks haven't just like Carriage House. I like identifying it with where it is so it's easy for people to find. I just think that there's value in that. Having named a few, and Tarver is a great example, it is not easy to find because it's confusing to people because it moved. But Carriage House is the subdivision. It's where the majority of the students who attend that, at least initially, are going to come from. It's, it's, there's ownership. Um, and so to me, that's the preferable. Although, having said that, I really like the history of Charter Oak, and I think that's cool. Charter Oak on Poison Oak is confusing to me and, and the road, and I worry about the... I don't think Oak Hills problem. would be confusing, though. 
but it's not in Oak Hills. And that's a, that's a good that's a good question though. Or Oak Ridge. But that's not a big area. Is Oak yeah. Ridge? Is it an Oak Ridge? You, Oak Ridge. Ridge? Uh, well, I just threw that out there. It's um, if, if you wanted to keep the. When I heard you say the word the, Oak. The feedback was it, it was a ridge, and there's a lot of. Correct. Is there, there, an Oak Ridge there are a lot of streets. Got to map up. I don't know of an Oak Ridge, but. Um, anybody, anybody got enough? Anybody want to put something in? Got a strong feeling? We're not taking action tonight. I'm not asking for commitments. We're just looking to narrow. You can certainly no, think no. about it sure. another month. Okay. I, my personal feeling is that Carriage House just doesn't sound like an elementary. It just doesn't. It, it sounds like a retirement home <laughs> or, I don't know, <laughs> or, I don't know, or a subdivision. But it elementary. doesn't sound like an elementary to me. It doesn't stick with you. Yeah, I understand. Okay. <laughs> um. I'll add Oak Ridge into the into that. I don't know that that helps identify where it is, though. I don't, and I that's what to me is important. I, I don't know. Sue, are we completely steering away from Poison Oak Elementary? I have no problem with Poison Oak Elementary. The oh. mascot would have to be the rash, and I, I don't. <laughs> I don't think there's any problem with that whatsoever. Joke. Personally, I don't <laughs> like it. Fine. <laughs> Personally. But there's so many negative connotations with it. We'll put it on the but, list. But if you think it should be on the list, wouldn't be my preference. I've had poison oak. I, it brings up all negative connotations. It's just an unpleasant. It's, I don't know. Just don't get a good feel for that. Do you all um, think you would like to select in December, or would you like to, ready um, to, to move on do this? Do you think and you'll be ready by know, next month, or you let's the just sooner the better? We'll okay. The y'all think about it. Continue if you get new ideas, and we'll just do what we did. We'll figure it out, and we'll come up with the first one that gets four votes. Okay, we'll put it back on the agenda for December the 11th. Okay. Okay. Good deal. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Janet, for being creative and looking for for different names. Um, okay, our next item, um, let me make sure I got my, my notes. Our next item on our agenda is to consider, uh, discuss and take action regarding the proposed termination of a professional employee's term contract. Mr. Schiller, do you need to present anything? Uh, we have a recommendation, uh, and I will... Uh, read the recommendation to propose to terminate the 2017-18 churn contract of Yvette Flores and authorize the board president to send written notice to Yvette Flores that the board proposes to terminate the 2017-18 churn contract for good cause. Is there a motion to approve? Have a motion for Mr. Cowan. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Norwood. Any questions or comments? All in favor of the motion, raise a hand. And that passes unanimously. Okay, next item is any issues or concerns for future agenda administrative reports. And I'm gonna, I want to jump out and say, because I should have done this earlier, Jennifer Land is with us, and we hired her before, but this is, she's been working, and she's here working. And we're really glad to have you, Jennifer. Thank you for being here. I should have said that earlier. She's doing uh, a great job. But we're glad you're on the team. She, uh, she smiles walking down the hall, even, I've noticed. So that's a good sign. Jeff? Do you have anything? No. Administrative reports, future agenda? Janet? Mike? No, sir. Sue? No. Bill? Sky? I think uh, I'd like to hear about a program that we have uh, that I hear a lot of stuff about. Just hear the direction it's going and some changes that we've mm -hmm. made in our Ames program. Can we mm -hmm. add that to okay. the agenda? You got it. Sure. Um, okay. Anything else? Okay, let me identify a few future agendas. We have a community pep rally scheduled for Thursday night, 6.30 in Tiger Field. Encourage everybody to be out there and support our Tigers. They'll be hosting a playoff game on Friday evening. Our next regular meeting is December 11th. Now, just like this month's early because of the holiday, uh, this month we'll have an early meeting next month uh, prior to the Christmas break. I uh, also want to draw your attention to um, the district updates. Dr. King Cannon and her oh, staff yes. will be leading Thank some you. district updates. And you didn't mention that earlier, but um, I'm not sure what all's on the agenda, but those are great opportunities for us to go. I want to encourage you to, to attend at least one or two of those. 
great opportunity to interact. We'll have an opportunity to give out the Christmas uh, gift to the employees and, and their 30 minutes worth, 20 minutes? There, What's it, your plan? There'll be about 30 minutes at each location. We'll um, have a, a short video update presentation, but we'll be there to answer questions and greet our staff and pass out Christmas gifts. So we'd love to have you there. Uh, really is a neat opportunity, and I will encourage you to, to come. We will, uh, one of my goals will be that one of us is at all of them, and so we'll make sure that, that we're there, but, but come to all you can. They're fun uh, if you can be there. Um, I think they do start, like, soon. Like They um, start after week, Thanksgiving. Uh, after Thanksgiving. No. Mm -hmm. 20s, yeah. Yeah. The week after Thanksgiving. 28th should be the first one. You got it. So, yeah, well, that'll be something good. Um, and then last, uh, with Thanksgiving coming up, um, it is always an opportunity for us to say thank you. So on behalf of the board, I just want to put many of you are here as administrators and, and staff who are working for our children. I uh, want to tell you what an honor it is for us to be able to work with you, but thank you for what you do for our kids. Uh, you're giving them opportunities to excel. You're giving them opportunities to perform and produce and do great things and receive recognition. Uh, and and that takes a lot of work, takes a lot of planning, and things like we've talked about tonight, the Leon Heights um, a one day adventure that they had came off great because great planning. Great planning has great outcomes. Um, but the, the blended learning project, uh, so many great things throughout our district and our, our students are achieving wonderful things. So thank you for what you're doing. We appreciate you. We are thankful for you. Okay, anything else? Okay, at this time, let me, I think we've gotten two. Uh, next on the agenda tonight is the level three grievance appeal of the parent of a Belton ISD student. The board will now adjourn to closed session to hear the level three grievance, which is a complaint against employees to deliberate according to board policy FNG local and to consult with the district's attorney regarding the appeal as provided for in sections 551.071 and 551.074 of the Texas government co code. It is 728. Any action that we take will be taken in open session here in this room. Board, we will move down the hall. <laughs> okay, it is 841, and we will reconvene in open session. Uh, Dr. Giebel, uh, thank you for being with us this evening uh, and for sharing your concerns with us. Uh, Board, is my recommendation that we dismiss Dr. Giebel's consolidated grievance and uphold the administration's decision at level two. Is there a motion? I have a motion for Ms. Lee, a second for Mr. Norwood. Any other comments or questions? Uh, we'll do a uh, roll vote, a record vote. Mr. Norwood? Yes. Yes. Ms. Lee? Mr. Cowan? Yes. Mr. Yes. Arthur. Mr. Camden? Yes. Mr. Taggart? Yes. And Mr. Pittenger, yes. Uh, motion carries. Uh, the consolidated grievance from Dr. Grievel is dismissed, and the administration's decision at level two is upheld. That completes our business for this evening. Uh, it is 842, and we are adjourned. <laughs>